as he just said so beautifully, you know, we have our one school of thought that says the universe has its flow, the universe is going, I should just go with the flow. And the other school that says, I'm creating my universe. So how do these two things come together? Okay. And we'll, we'll end with this question. It's both. For example, we have what the universe creates, which I can't change. So for example, there are four seasons, at least four seasons. Let's say four just to be simple. Summer comes. I love the summer. Now summer starts to end. The cold days start coming. I have two choices. I can scream and cry and yell and refuse to put away my bikini. I refuse to let this winter come. I'm just going to keep visualizing it's summer, it's summer, it's summer and keep wearing my bikini. And eventually I'm going to end up with pneumonia because eventually if I stay that stubborn, I'll be wearing my bikini in a snowstorm and will find myself in a hospital with pneumonia. So, in that level, we have to see what is the universal flow. Oh, we're moving from summer to winter. Nothing I say, nothing I do can change it. This is the nature of the universe. It doesn't matter if I like it, don't like it, accept it, don't accept it. It's the nature of the universe. And my only choice in that case is, how can I create my life in line with the universe? So for example, if I was making my living as a swimming teacher, as now we're moving from summer into winter, my number of swimming students is decreasing day by day by day as it goes from being 90 degrees to being 40 degrees. Rather than continuing to visualize swimming students coming every day and advertising more and more that I can, I can make it happen, I can build up my swimming student practice, I have to say, well, wait, the nature of the universe is bringing us into wintertime. Maybe for now, in this season, it might be good to start a business of shoveling snow. Or maybe I could tutor students in reading or math as they go back into school, rather than in swimming. If I walk up to the rooftop and I say, I can fly. I don't believe in the law of gravity. I've cre I'm creating my future, I'm creating my universe. I can be anything, do anything. I can fly. Well, you know what's gonna happen when I jump off that building? <laughs> Splat. <laughs> regardless of the strength of my belief that I could fly, regardless of my adamant refusal to believe in gravity, regardless of the elaborate nature of the wings that I've created and taped on me, the law of nature is such that gravity pulls me down. So there's some flows of the universe that we have to go with. But the question becomes what we do in the flow of the universe. So going back to my example, let's say, I have a swimming practice. It's a very lucrative practice in the summertime. I'm doing very well. I've got a lot of inflow of money. Now, I've gone from having 100 students to having two students as we move from July into the end of August. The inflow is less. Now I've gone from two to one. Now I've gone from one to zero. Well, the flow of the universe is just from hot to cold. The flow of the universe has nothing to do with rich to poor. The flow is hot to cold, summer to winter. My ability to adapt to that flow is what will determine my rich to poor. If I can 
adapt to the flow and start learning how to shovel snow or start learning how to tutor reading or math, my inflow will stay as much as it's always been, if not get higher. The flow from summer to winter did not say thou shalt end up in a hospital with pneumonia. It wasn't the, the flow of the universe, the plan of the universe that I should catch pneumonia. It was my inability to adapt to the flow and to take off my bikini and put on a pair of thermals. And so when we talk about going with the flow, it doesn't mean refusing to put on a life vest. It doesn't mean refusing to sit in the boat. It doesn't mean that I allow that flow to sweep me up and throw me into the ra rocks and drown me. It means an awareness that this is the direction it's going. And how can I, in this flow, create the life that I want? I'll, I'll end with an example that we give very frequently about, we typically give it talking about karma, but it works here very nicely as well, which is let's say that the, the flow of the universe is you've been given a cow. That cow has walked right onto your doorstep. You can't change it. There's no phone number that you can call that came on a tag with it that said, you know, to, to, to return me and get a kitty instead, dial blah, 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 blah. No return policy, no exchange policy. This cow has landed on your doorstep. That was the flow. From this cow, we get milk. If we drink the milk, assuming that our cow is fed wonderful, healthy, organic feed. If we drink the milk and we use it to create yogurt and ghee and cheese, will be nourished and nurtured. This cow also gives manure. And if I use the manure in my fields, my crops will be healthy and strong. And I can feed people, I can be of service. But if I eat the manure and I dump the milk in the fields, I will get sick and my crops will die. But I can't say, oh, I guess that was the flow of the universe. I should just go with it. The universe must want me to be sick and for my crops to die. The flow of the universe was this cow arrived on my doorstep. How I adjust and adapt and live within that flow is what ends up determining whether I get sick and my crops die or I'm healthy and I have a good harvest. So the, the art, the art of that spiritual practice is recognizing what the flow is, going with it, but using all of the tools that we've been given, our, our intelligence, our creativity, our intuition, our understanding, our initiative, to figure out how to build ourselves a raft that in this flow will take me where I want to go.